بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله تعالى نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كلام الله وخير الهدى هدى محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار السلام عليكم ورحمة الله in our last class of the tafsir of the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, through the seer of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we were looking at the road to Medina, the road to the hijrah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to Medina, the hijrah. And we said on that way to hijrah, the path of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, from Mecca to Medina, there was a number of incidences which we looked at. The first of those incidences was the hadith of Ummu Ma'bad, the hadith of Ummu Ma'bad. And this hadith of Ummu Ma'bad, or this incident, we said it was important because it was the most detailed description of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that we have. The last incident we looked at was the incident of Suraqah ibn Malik ibn Ju'shum. And Suraqah ibn Malik was one of the best trackers or the bounty hunters known in that peninsula, known in that area. And he was sent, or he wanted to track down the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, hoping to get the reward of a hundred camels, which the Quraysh had promised, the Mushrikeen of Quraysh had promised, to whoever captures the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, or Abu Bakr, Hayyan, or Mayyitan, dead or alive. So Suraqah ibn Malik went to take, wanted to get this bounty. So it's upon the track of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So that's the last incident we looked at, the incident of Suraqah ibn Malik. And we said Suraqah ibn Malik changed from being the predator to feeling like the what? The prey. Because of what he saw from the affairs of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because Suraqah ibn Malik, despite the speed and the strength of his horse, the strength and the speed of Suraqah, the weapons of Suraqah, the armor which Suraqah he took with him, he realized when he drew close to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and it was a very close proximity to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to harm the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And how close was Suraqa? It was so close, you could hear the recitation of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. At that point, he realized that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was aided by an army or a force that's not a force or army of this dunya. When his horse is sank into the ground, the foot of his horse is sank into the ground. At that point, Suraqa, he knew at that moment that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is going to become victorious. And then he sought from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam a man, a surety of protection and security. For that instant moment, no, for the future. It was not until later on, after the conquest of Mecca, the conquest of Ta'if and Hunayn, that Suraqa, he brought out that thing that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Aman, guarantee of safety or security, which is written on a piece of leather or piece of bone, and he gave it to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And we mentioned in the incident of Suraqa that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned something to him min ilm al ghaib from the knowledge of the unseen. And what is that thing that he mentioned to him from the knowledge of the unseen? Barakallah feek. From the knowledge of the unseen is the knowledge of the future. That the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said to Suraqah, how would it be on that day? Either Labista, when you wear the bracelet of who? Kisra. This is something that will happen in the future. And this is knowledge of the unseen. So does the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam have knowledge of the unseen? There's an ayah in the Quran where Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala said the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Qul, say to them, I do not possess harm, nor do I possess any benefit. And he said, about himself sallallahu alayhi wasallam Allah ta'ala ordered him to say that walaw kuntu a'lamu al-ghayb if i was to know the unseen lastakthartu min al-khayr wa ma massaniya as-su i will only increase in goodness for myself and no evil will touch me so the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam does not know the unseen so how is he able to tell suraqa this 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, عَالِمُ الْغَيْبِ فَلَا يُظْهِرُ عَلَى غَيْبِهِ أَحَدًا Allah ta'ala is the only knower of the unseen. And he does not reveal the unseen to anyone, ahada. And this is nakiro here. Yadul ala madha, ala al-umum. Means generally, nobody knows the unseen. Not the anbiya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not the salihin, not the shuhada. Nobody. Illa man irtada. Except for he or whom Allah ta'ala is pleased with to know the unseen. Certain aspects of the unseen. So this issue of suraqa was revealed to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in reality, suraqa in the end, he wore the what? The bracelet and even the Taj, the crown of Kisra. And Kisra is who? It's a title for the emperors of, of Persia. So this is the incident of Suraqa. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, after the incident of Suraqa, he continued. But Suraqa, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala had changed his heart at that moment. That whatever he found upon the path, hunting the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it will divert them. Say, no, don't go this way. I've already tried this path. I've already tried that path. Because everybody was seeking this bounty of a hundred camels from Quraysh. So Suraqa, when he meets anybody, he sends them on a diversion. Don't go this way. I've gone this way. They're not that way. And Suraqa, the incident that happened, he kept it to himself until he made sure the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had reached Medina. So on the part of Medina, the Sahaba or the Muslims in Medina they had heard about Khuruj or the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in Medina wa Qudumihi or Afwa min Mecca wa Qudumihi ila al Medina. That the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had exited Mecca and is approaching Medina. The Sahaba radiallahu anhum and the Muslims at that time that were in Medina, they said, Lamma sami'na bi Khuruj al Rasulillahi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam min Mecca wa Qudumihi ila al Medina. When we heard that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had left Mecca and was approaching or coming towards Medina, they said, Kunna nakhruj idha sallayna subh. Any time we pray subh, as soon as we heard that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was coming, every time we prayed a subh, which is Salatul Fajr, we'll leave immediately ila dhahir harratina. We'll go outside of our areas, outside of our vicinity. Why would they go into these places? نَنْتَظِرُوا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ Every day, they will pray Fajr and go out of the areas waiting for the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. He says, فَوَاللَّهِ نَبْرُحُ That by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so by Allah azza wa jal, we will stay there حَتَّى تَغْلِبُنَا الشَّمْسِ Until we were overcome by the heat of the sun and there was no shade. And at that moment, we enter our houses. And he said, until that day that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam began to approach Medina. He said, on that day, Jalasna kama kunna najlis. We were sitting there as we usually sit there, waiting for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to approach. And these days, he said, ayamul harra, were days which were extremely hot. So he said, on that particular day, we entered our houses because there was no more shade. He said, until the first person to see the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was who? Rajulun min al a man from amongst the Jews, was the first to see the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And this man from the Jews, when he saw the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, fasaraha bi a'la sawtihi, he screamed with the highest level, at the top of his voice, ya bani qayla, qad jaa jaddukum. Bani qayla, which is one of the names of the Ansar, because the grandfather from the grandfather was qayla. So he said, O oh, children qayla, your jadd, that man or that person or that fortune you've been waiting for, Qajaa, has come now. So he said, the Sahabi radiallahu an, we all rushed out. He said, فَأَثَارُ بِالسِّلَاحِ And how did they rush out? He said, they rushed out with all their weapons to meet the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because the promise they made to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, بِيَعَ الْأَقَبَ الثَّانِيَةِ to show al-wafa was to protect, to fight. They didn't just rush out to meet the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. They said, "Fa'atharu bil-silah." They grabbed their weapons to go meet the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So he said, when they grabbed their weapons to go meet the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, because they could see him from far, but couldn't see him clearly. The two men. The only thing they could see, mubayyadin, that they were wearing white. That wearing white, so they saw them from afar. So they said, when they approached the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and Abu Bakr, they said, "Wa huwa fi zilli nakhla, wa ma'ahu Abu Bakr radiyallahu an, mithlu sinnihi." And with him was Abu Bakr, was around the same age as him. He said, and we surrounded them, 
And he said, لم يكن رأى رسول رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قبل ذلك. None of us before that moment had ever seen the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. فجلس صامتا. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم sat down quietly. And it was Abu Bakr Siddiq رضي الله عنه. And they were under the nakhla to get shade under the date tree. He said, when they saw the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم Abu Bakr, they did not know which one was the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. He says, some of them fahayyu Abu Bakr. Some of them were greeting Abu Bakr radiallahu anh, as though he was the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, when the heat became too intense and the day tree could no longer give them shade, he said, inda thalika, at that moment, faqama Abu Bakr faadallahu biridaihi. At that moment, Abu Bakr, he took off his upper garment and he covered the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. فَأَرَفْنَاهُ عِنْدَ ذَلِكَ We knew this is the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So Abu Bakr subhanallah, at any point, we're just looking after the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said that, that moment we knew this was the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the part or the place where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam first uh, arrived at or approached was where? Quba. So this was in Quba. And when he arrived in Quba, that was uh, Rabi'ul Awwal. The first Rabi'ul Awwal, Yom al Ithnain, on a Monday. They said the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam arrived in Rabi'ul Awwal, the first Rabi'ul Awwal, on a Monday. And it was said that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the place he stayed at was the house of Kulthum bin Hidmi. And some of the ulama of Sirah, or the biography of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they disputed this. They said in the state in the house of Sa'ad ibn Khaythama. And who is Sa'ad ibn Khaythama? Barakallahu feek. From the great personality and the aristocrats of Medina. There was As'ad ibn Zurara and Sa'ad ibn Khaythama. These were the two from the big aristocrats of Medina that the initial plan was to oppose the da'wah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa But they became Muslim before the Ejra. So some stayed, said he stayed in this house. Because this is where the people gather to hear from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But the ulama of Sira said there's no contradiction. He stayed in the house of Kulthum. But later on in the day, he'll go to the house of Wu Sa'ad ibn Khaythama, and the people come to hear from the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And they said the reason he stayed in the house of Kulthum, that Kulthum ibn Hadmi was what? Because he mentioned the houses in which the Muhajirin they stayed in, the different families. One family stayed there, another family stayed there. But there was a particular house. It was known as Baytu Uzzab, the house of the Wu, the bachelors. Kulthum was an old man. And he was a bachelor. So they said the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he stayed in this house, the house of the bachelors. But in the daytime or later on in the day, we'll go to the house of Sa'ad ibn Khaythama. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam stayed in Quba. And he stayed there, Yom al Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Some say up to Friday. Some of the ulama, they say no, he stayed more than that. But what is definite is that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he prayed Jumu'ah with Banu Amr. Which is the tribe of who? Of that area, Banu Amr, on a Friday, in a masjid which is in the belly or the middle of the valley, in Quba. So the first, and this was on a Jumu'ah, the first Jumu'ah that was prayed in Medina was where? In Quba, at the valley of Banu Amr, in the valley of Banu Amr. This was the first Jumu'ah in Al Medina. He said the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam went and continued towards his journey to Al Medina, towards Medina. When the people of Medina also heard that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam began to approach Medina, they themselves, the children, were outside or outskirts of Medina. And Anas ibn Malik radiallahu taala an, he said the children just hearing the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam were coming. They were just screaming, run all around the place. Ja'a Muhammad, Ja'a Muhammad, Ja'a Muhammad. Anas ibn Malik radiallahu ta'ala an, he said the adults ordered us to go back to the city and inform the adults in the city that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was approaching. So when Anas radiallahu ta'ala an, he went back to Medina with the other children from the outskirts to the middle of Medina to inform that they said, فَكَانَ يَوْمُ فَرَحٌ وَإِبْتِهَاجٌ that that day was a day of great joy and a day of happiness. He said, Lam tara al-Madina yawman mithlah. Medina has never witnessed a day like this, ever. And that's what Anas radiallahu ta'ala an, concerning this day, Anas said, Ma ra'aytu yawman qat. 
أحسن وأضوء من يوم دخل علينا فيه رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم. أنا سرّد الله عن. He said, I have never seen a day that was better or more full of light and brighter than the day that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam entered Medina. And then Anas radiyallahu an, the same narrator of the hadith, he said, I've never seen a day. And Anas, he had many days. He said, I've never seen a day. And Anas had many days. In fact, from the Sahaba radiyallahu anhum, Anas had the most days. Why? He was the last of the Sahaba to die, radiyallahu ta'ala an. And this was a due to the dua of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam for who? For Anas. When he said, Allahumma, بارك له في رزقه والله مرزقه رزقا وولدا وبارك له Allah give him, provide for him risk, provisions and uh, provide for him children and bless him in those two things so the thing is not about having more children it's about the barakah and also it's not about having much wealth it's what Allah Ta'ala blesses Anas radiallahu an when he passed was one of the richest of the sahaba radiallahu anhum Anas radiallahu an, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him long life. He lived to the age of 103. Anas radiallahu an, he had over 80 children. They said he had 80 boys and two girls. Radiallahu ta'ala an. So nowadays, when the Muslim, this 2.5 men had children, and you got six or five or ten children, people are, subhanallah, that brother's got a lot of children. A lot of children. I remember, subhanallah, this was many years ago. When at that time, I only had five children. And I went to a brother's house. And the son, he couldn't remember my name. And he was trying to tell his mother who was at the door. It was me and my family and the children. So he was trying to remember. He couldn't remember my name. So he said to his mother in Swahili, that there has come that man. That man, that man that has loads of children. So what would he have said? <laughs> That's how people knew me, the man with loads of children. And I was five children then. So what did they say about Anas radiallahu an? 80 plus children. So Anas radiallahu an, due to the dua of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And whatever wants that which Allah ta'ala blessed Anas with, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam could not make this dua for you now. For whoever wants this, Anas radiallahu an, he narrated a hadith. He said, Man sarrahu أن يبسط له في رزقه وأن ينسى أثره فليصل رحمها رحمه whoever wishes and loves that Allah سبحانه وتعالى increases for him his provision and prolongs for him his life what should he do فليصل رحمه he should keep the ties of kinship whichever way we can we hear as expats, we're not here with our family, but there's ways to keep the ties of kinship. You could call, WhatsApp, so many ways. Even if you were to set an appointed time, one day of the week, it should never pass, even a day, really and truly. But at least once a week, you call your mother and father and say to them, Mom, Dad, I appreciate everything you do for me. I love you. And not only your mother and father, Rahim, your brothers, your sisters, your cousins, even if they don't want to contact you, because the hadith says, the one that keeps the tie of kinship is not the one that people keep ties with, he keeps ties with them, no. It's the one that people cut him off and he still keeps the ties. فَالْيَسِرْ رَحِيمًا So Anas he said there was never a better day than this. And Anas went on to say, وَمَا رَأَيْتُ يَوْمًا قَدْ I have never seen a day in all of my life. أَقْبَحُ وَأَظْلَمُ مِنْ يَوْمٍ مَا تَفِيهِ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَيْهُ وَسَلَّمُ I've never seen a more horrible, a sadder day and a more darker day than the day that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam passed away. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So Anas radiallahu an, he said, كَانَ ذَلِكَ يَوْمُ الْفَرَحُ وَإِبْتِهَاجِ Lights of which Medina had never seen. لَبِسَ النَّاسِ أَحْسَنْ مَلَابِسَهُمْ كَأَنَّهُمْ فِي يَوْمٍ عِيدٍ Subhanallah. He said on that day to receive the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the people wore the best of their clothing. He said you think that day was Eid. That they wore the best of their clothing to meet the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And in reality, it is Eid. Because after the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam entered there, Nawwara al Medina, or Nawwarat al Medina bil Islam. Medina became enlightened with Islam. And that's why some people call it Medina, what? Munawwara. But it's not from the names of Medina. It's Nabi, uh, Medina to Al Nabawiya, or Al Tayyiba. Because anywhere that Islam has entered is Munawwara. So it's not specific to Medina. 
So Pakistan, Munawara. Bangladesh, Munawara. Nigeria, Munawara. Medina, Munawara. But people say Medina too, Munawara. You could say Nabi, Nabi, Medina and Nabawiya, Al Tayyiba, Al Medina, Al Sharifa, but not Munawara. So it was a day that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made a day of Eid for them because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought the light of Islam into Al Medina. And they received the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with such ex excitement that he went on to say that the people of Medina kharaju ahlun Medina yuhalliluna fi farahin wa ibtihaj that the people of Medina they came out yuhalliloon saying la ilaha illallah la ilaha illallah fi farahin in great happiness wa yaquloon and everybody was saying, Ya Rasulullah, Ya Muhammad, Ya Rasulullah. And when they came to meet the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, why were they saying Ya Rasulullah? Because what does Ya stand for? O, oh, to call. That's why now that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that is no longer with us. We could not say Ya Rasulullah to call the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I could say Ya Abba Salman because he's in prox close proximity to me. But if he's not with me, I can't say Ya Abba Salman, istighathan, seeking deliverance. So the people of Medina, they were saying Ya Rasulullah, Ya Rasulullah. Because the people of Medina, they could see the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam wherever the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was. And how was that? Imam Ahmed Rahimallahu Ta'ala narrated it is Musnad. عندما دخل رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم المدينة صعد الرجال والنساء فوق البيوت وتفرق الغلمان والخدم في الطريق ينادون. He said when the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم entered Medina, Subhanallah, that the men and the women climbed on top of their houses. Subhanallah. So they could get a glimpse of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. The men and the women, they climbed on top of their houses. And the children were scattered and the servants were usually busy with things. They were scattered all over the road. And all of them were shouting, Ya Muhammad, Ya Rasulullah, Oh Muhammad, Oh Rasulullah. And everybody wanted to give whatever they could give to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And one of the people that was there was the mother of Anas. And what is the name of the mother of Anas? Ummu Barakallahu Fiq. Ummu Sulaim. Everybody has something they wanted to give to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Umm Salima had nothing. The only thing she had was who? Anas radiallahu anhu. At that time, Anas was at the tender age of 10 years. She said, Ya Rasulullah, I have nothing to give you. The only thing I have is this child, that I want him to serve you. Subhanallah. Anas radiallahu anhu, the Prophet Sallallahu when he was fasting, would be the one to prepare the sahur. At the age of 10, bring the water for his wudu. Bring the water when he releases himself at the age of 10. And a servant that serves us, even our own children, okay, let's say servants, our maids, they see from us another side of us. But Anas was a, the Prophet ﷺ's servant. He said, I've never seen anybody better in manners. He never said to me one day, why did you do this? Why didn't you do this? And he was his servant. He said, and one day the Prophet ﷺ on an errand. He said, I forgot. And I saw some children I was playing. And I saw the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam from afar. And he said, Anas, if you completed what I told you to do. I remember, subhanAllah, when we were children, your father sent you on an errand and you disappear, subhanAllah. I remember one day it was in Nigeria and they sent us to fetch water. Because there is no water, you have to fetch the water. So we're fetching water. And when you fetch water, there's lots of people playing football, playing football. And all we could see from afar was Rajulun, not a white though. He was wearing the big Nigerian, big Nigerian clothing. And in this part of it, there's a big pocket. He put his hand inside, he took something out, and we saw what that is, kiboko. It's a whip. It came out like this. But subhanAllah, Anas radiallahu anhu said, I've never seen anybody better than the Prophet So she gave Anas, her son, to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam at the age of 10, Umm Salim, from the people that came to meet the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And subhanAllah, Anas radiallahu anhu became min al one of the people that narrated the most hadith from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So the people of Medina rushed to meet the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Not only to offer things to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, but rather for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to stay with them, to stay in their area. So it was said the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, everybody was inviting him to say, 
And they were saying, Ya Rasulullah, aqim indana. O Messenger of Allah, stay with us. The first of the tribes to approach the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was saying, فَأَتَاهُ عِتْبَانِ إِبْنُ مَالِكُ وَعَبَّاسِ إِبْنُ عُبَادَ إِبْنُ نَضْلَ فِي الرِّجَالِ مِنْ بَنِ سَالِمْ إِبْنُ عَوْفِ the tribe of Bani Salim and Awf, they approached the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam فَقَالُوا يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ So they said, O Messenger of Allah, أَقِمْ عِنْدَنَا Stay with us فِي الْعَدَدِ وَالْعُدَّ وَالْمَنْعَى You stay with us because we have numbers, we have weapons and preparation and ability to protect you. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, خَلُّوا سَبِيلَهَا Stay out of his path. Mean the path of what? The camel. But because the camel has been ordered by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, wherever it settles, that's where I'm going to stay. So they moved out of the way and the camel moved on. Then another tribe from the tribes of Medina came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the second tribe was Banu Bayada. And they said the same thing to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he said the same thing to them. And the camel continued. And a number of tribes approached the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam until eventually the last tribe, Hatta Ida Atat Dar Banu Malik ibn Najjar, until it came across the compound of Banu Malik ibn Najjar. He said, Barakat ala masjidihi, Barakat. And we covered this verb before, Barakat, which is what? He kneeled down. So the kneeling of the camel is called what? Mabruk. The position, it is Mabruk. That's why when you're congratulating somebody, you don't say what? Mabruk. You say, Mubarak. The kneeling position, when a camel is kneeling, it is what? Mabruk. When you're blessed, you say what? Mubarak. For barakat. Ala babi masjidihi. The camel, in need, kneeled down. There. Wa huwa yawma idhin mirbad. It means at that time, that particular area was not taken care of. It didn't bear any fruits, no date trees, nothing. Not taken care of. And that part, he said, لِغُلَامَيْنْ يَتِيمَيْنْ مِنْ بَنِي نَجَّارِ It belonged to two orphans from Bani Najjar. ثُمَّ بَنَى مَالِكْ إِبْنَ جَارِ Aha. And then Malik, بَنَى مَالِكْ إِبْنَ جَارِ Malik <coughs> ibn Najjar, he adopted those two orphans before adoption was made impermissible. And they stayed with him. And they were looked after by Afwan. They were, they were adopted by Afwan Mu'ad ibn Afra. Mu'adh ibn Afra, he adopted them. So when the camel kneeled down there, he got up again. And he moved a little bit further. And then he stopped completely. Then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa he got off at that point. And that now has become the what? The message and the abode of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked, who does it belong to? So they told him that this belongs to two orphans from Bani Najjar, Sahal and Suhail. That was the name of the two orphans, Sahal and Suhail. And they've been looked after by Mu'adh ibn Afra. So Mu'adh ibn Afra went to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he said it belongs to these two orphans. So the Prophet said, how much is it? He said, I will pay the price for it. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, no. How much is it? Then he went to the two orphans and asked them, how much do you want for this? The two orphans went to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They said, no, our reward is of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he still refused. And he asked Abu Bakr to pay for the land. And he bought that land. That even a du'at, is that me now to back off from Abu Salman or from Abu Hanifa because I'm Abu Hanifa I take you for it. No, the Prophet refused to do this. And such it was that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said to the Medina. So next week, bi-ibnillahi ta'ala, we're going to look at the lessons we learn from this whole episode of Hijrah. The Hadith of Ma'bad, Suraqa. We look at the lessons of Hijrah. And then we'll continue with the first ayat which was sent down where? In Medina. Subhanakallah, bihamdika, shadu an la ilaha, anta astaghfirullah, atubu ilayka. Any questions, inshallah?